always had a difficulty letting go of my ex-fiance, Ken. And he left me. And it broke my heart. You, when's the last time you talked to him? Oh, it's been so long. Months. What makes you a liar? Ken is, you know, he's working, he's got a girlfriend, he's, you know, living his life. I don't know what the future holds. Gypsy Rose Blanchard has been spotted out in public with her ex-fiance, Ken, just four days after the announcement that she and her husband, Ryan Anderson, were separated. The rumors and speculation are already flying about if Gypsy left Ryan for Ken. A picture of Gypsy and her ex-fiance, Ken, getting tattooed was posted to the GRB Reddit group just yesterday, and it has now been revealed that they were getting matching tattoos together. People Magazine said, Said in an article, in an interview with People, Ken Urker's mother, Raina Williams, confirmed the two got lunch and went to a tattoo parlor in the days after Blanchard announced her split from Anderson. Blanchard's cousin, Bobby Petrie, who owns the parlor, confirms to People the pair got tattoos together. Ken's mother states, they are not back together. They're very cool. Ken is just being a supportive friend to her and that's it. I think she's a sweet girl. I think she's made her mistakes. She's trying to learn from them like anyone else and I care a lot for Gypsy and I want to see good things happen for her. Now, in an article put out by TMZ, it states, we're told they popped into the shop around 3 p.m. with a clear idea in mind for what they wanted done. Our source tells us that Gypsy and Ken were seeking matching husky dog tats, which to them symbolized their strong bond. We're told the tattoo artist inked one husky on one person's right arm and another on the other person's left arm. So when Gypsy and Ken put their arms together, the huskies face each other. Our sources say it was a very simple tattoo with no shading. Ken paid for both. Now, Ken's mom also told People Magazine, quote, I know that after she announced the separation, he was like, I've got to be there for her, Williams said. I said, be very careful with that. She's a married woman and you don't want to hurt her. And he's like, you're right. I would never do that. I would never, ever do that. I will be super careful. Now, as we know, this is not Gypsy's first tattoo. As they are filming her new Lifetime docu-follow, they have been sharing a few sneak peeks. The last time I seen Gypsy, she was four years old, and she was pushing other kids around in a wheelchair. It's been a long time. Most of the time, you do the tattoo, and then they go to prison. I had to wait for Gypsy to get out of prison to finally get a tattoo with me. Gypsy? Good to finally see you. Oh, this warms my heart. This is definitely a, a moment of independence right now for me. Getting a tattoo is a choice, and I finally get to have the choice to do one. Life sometimes hurts more than a tattoo does. Yeah. That didn't hurt at all, actually. He's so beautiful. I'm a little emotional. He's done my mother's, he's done Chrissy's, he's done my dad's tattoos, he's done my brother's. So this is an epic moment for us. Now, Ryan hasn't made any public statements about his separation from Gypsy, but he did change his Instagram bio to just, my name is Ryan Anderson, as well as unfollowing everyone in Gypsy's family. Now, after news broke about the separation, Ryan was still following Gypsy's half-sister, Mia, as well as her stepmother, Christy, and her father, Rod. However, as of today, Ryan has unfollowed both of them. So, who is Ken, and what are the details of their relationship? Let's get into it. Ken first met Gypsy in 2017 after he wrote her a letter of support after watching the HBO documentary, Mommy Dead and Dearest. Many men write to me in prison. and planned to have a wedding in 2020. However, in August of 2019, they took a break, which we know was short-lived because Ryan started to write to Gypsy in 2020. But it didn't work out. I was still such a young girl. I had so much to learn about relationships. And he left me. And it broke 
by heart. Then, as we know, Ryan and Gypsy got married two years later in 2022. Now, Ken doesn't so much enjoy the spotlight or the public eye, so Gypsy and Ken kept their relationship pretty hush-hush for the first year. Then, in July of 2019, E! News puts out this article. See the first photos of Gypsy Rose Blanchard with her new fiancé. The pics which show Ken's first meeting with Gypsy's parents were taken in the jail several months ago. Gypsy's family and her future husband, Ken, met in person for the first time in March. Fancy Mazzelli, a family friend and representative for Gypsy, told E! News. Gypsy and Ken are making plans to build a life together once she is released. Now, if you don't know who Fancy Mazzelli is, she is from the Good Wives Network, and she has been very vocal ever since Gypsy's release and about their falling out that she had with Gypsy's family. And as I understand it, Ken was actually one of the reasons why this happened. Fancy was actually supposed to put out her own documentary called By Proxy. And I'm not 100% sure when this screenshot was taken. This was posted to the Reddit group. But this is a screenshot of a Facebook post that Ken made about Fancy. So this says, I just wanted to share my opinion on Fancy. So here's the deal. Everything this lady Fancy posts is garbage. First and foremost, she is not a friend of the Blanchard family. She is not a spokesperson for the Blanchard family. She is not working with the Blanchard family. She has absolutely zero trust and zero cooperation with Gypsy herself. She claims that she has all this concern for her, all this care for her well-being, just wants the best for her. Yet her actions have spoken nothing but the contrary. Gypsy has asked you many times to leave it alone. She doesn't want it. She wants to let it go. Yet you ignore her and pursue your own selfish path. First of all, this woman has voiced ill opinions towards me, which is understandable since I have been in the way of her, quote, project for a while because I keep Gypsy away from it because I, unlike you, have done nothing but keep Gypsy's best interest at heart. And at first importance, she doesn't want to do another series and I don't blame her. How can she heal and move on if she's constantly rehashing the same story into the spotlight every three months? She gets targeted by other inmates and guards and her wound will never heal until she gets some rest from the media. But of course, that means nothing to her when she's trying to build her career from nothing into something. Now, shortly after the first article was published by E! News, Gypsy and Ken had separated because in August, just one month later, they put out another article titled, Gypsy Rose Blanchard Back Together with Fiance After Split. And in this article, it states, one day after E! News exclusively revealed that Gypsy Rose Blanchard had split from her fiance Ken, it appears the couple has had a change of heart. Gypsy's stepmother, Christy Blanchard, tells E! News, I talked to Gypsy, they are back together, just taking things slow and are keeping their personal lives personal from here on out. When they are ready to talk about their future plans, they will. Until then, we will keep their relationship out of the media. However, on that same day, E! News puts out this article titled, Gypsy Rose's Rare Prison Interview Reveals Wedding Details and Relationship Drama. In this exclusive Q&A, the figure tells all about her plans for the future and whether she hopes to be a mom. Now, in this article, they ask Gypsy how she first met Ken. She says, he wrote me a letter of support after watching the HBO documentary Mommy Dead and Dearest back in 2017. Anyways, I wrote him back, and pretty soon, we just started writing on a weekly basis. We became fast friends. It was pretty soon after that that we started talking on the phone. We would spend hours on the phone. I talked to him like I had known him my whole life, and vice versa. It wasn't too late after that that I sent him a visitation form to come and visit me. He came, and it was kind of a funny story, but within the first 30 minutes, he leaned over and gave me the most wonderful kiss of my whole life. So, it's a prison visitation room, so the level of physical contact contact that is allowed is limited to holding hands and a brief hug and a closed mouth kiss. The kiss he gave me was quite passionate. I looked at him and was like, I didn't even know you liked me like that. And he said, yeah, I have for a while. 
and I'm like, I have for a while too. Then Gypsy was asked, how do your father and Christy feel about your relationship with Ken? She said, they're very supportive of him. Christy and Ken have been Facebook friends for two years now. Ever since I started talking with Ken, I told Christy, hey, friend this guy on Facebook. We are really good friends right now. They've known each other for a while. Well, my dad, not so much. This visit was the first time they were able to talk. It was a beautiful moment because Ken looked at my dad and was like, you know, I really love your daughter and I have the best intentions with her and I really want to marry her and I would like your blessing. My dad turned at him and looked at me and looked back at him and said, welcome to the family. I hope you can take care of her. Gave him the blessing and made me want to cry. Now, although we don't know the exact reason that Gypsy and Ken broke off their engagement, Gypsy does talk about her relationship with Ken in the Lifetime docuseries, Prison Confessions of Gypsy Rose Blanchard. She talks about how every time she gets close to someone, they leave her. It was also revealed in the Lifetime docuseries that Gypsy was in contact with Ken just weeks before her wedding to Ryan. Gypsy calls Ryan and tells him about a dream she had in which she left Ryan for Ken. Now, after Gypsy's release from prison, she and Ryan went on to the Vile Files podcast in which they discuss Gypsy's relationship with Ken, and Ryan talks about how much he dislikes him. I don't think that he has respect for my marriage. Um, well, he doesn't like me because I've called him names. Names. Like I have, I, you know, <laughs> actually, oh. Gypsy has, like, asked me to text him, like, hey, we're married now? Text him because, like, He still has my stuff. He has like, stuff he has of hers that he, like, like old holds. Pictures of- Gypsy also talks about how she bought things while she was incarcerated, had them mailed to Ken's house, and how he still had her things because rather than just mailing them to Gypsy, he wanted her to come get them in person. Meanwhile, Ken is commenting on people's TikTok videos about Gypsy, telling them to leave Gypsy alone. And before Gypsy deleted her public social media accounts, she was actually following Ken on TikTok. Now, many people started to speculate that Gypsy and Ken may be getting back together after Gypsy changed her social media profile names from Gypsy Rose Blanchard Anderson back to Gypsy Rose Blanchard. And once people began talking about this, Ken's mom, who was also on TikTok, posted her own video. Okay, so I suppose inquiring minds want to know. <clears throat> First off, of course, I'm my son's biggest advocate. Um, Ken is a great guy, no doubt. I raised a good boy. I raised two good boys and three great daughters. Um, am I anti-gypsy? No, I'm really not. I'm an older woman. I understand the bond of a mother and a child. I look deeper into people's mistakes. I've always been a very non-judgmental person. And... Do I think Gypsy did wrong? Yes, I do. I've met Gypsy, and guess what? She knows she did wrong, too. If Gypsy could go back in time, she would do something different. But none of us can do that. I think all the hate is ridiculous. I think she got out of prison. She got on social media. What person isn't nowadays? Um, especially young people. I think that she got tripped up with some of her words, and man, did everyone pounce. Do I feel sorry for Nick Gutter, John? I do. I feel sorry for him. Obviously, there's some mental illness there. He's autistic. But on top of being autistic and having mental illness, I think Nick possesses a true um, darkness. And for that, I don't know that I'd want to see Nick back on the street. Or if so, if he were back on the street, I'm not opposed to it. Um, at least after receiving some some real mental help. You know, let's go back to the bond of mother and child. And this is why my sympathy goes to Gypsy. None of y'all know, you talk about how she's so manipulative and how she learned from her mother. Well, a lot of that is true, she did. Um, because we all learn from her mother, especially when it's a one child situation and a single mom. 
You know, she didn't have her dad in her life like he would have wanted to be, but he was working. I'm not putting anything down on anyone or putting anyone down, I should say. He was working man. He paid his child support. And, you know, back in those days, that's, that made you father of the year. Trust me, I know I raised five all by myself and I didn't get child support. But, you know, a mother can manipulate, especially she had Gypsy since infant on. Okay, this was her daughter. And so by the time Gypsy was 15, 16, and May could have or could not have been in on it, as people say, at that point, she was so controlled by her mother, she wouldn't have had a choice, you know? And then as she got older, as we do, as human beings do, our brain starts developing, we start having our urges, we start wanting our lives. Um, some rage had to set in on this girl. How could it not? How can anyone not expect some anger to come out of her when she would try to get away and her mother not just physically retained her, but mentally retained her as well? I've seen, I've seen all the documentaries on Gypsy, um, learned some stuff past her getting out of prison, and I still just don't look at her like she's some evil monster. I think she was a victim. I think she chose the wrong way to get out of that situation. I think she partially paid for it. And for all you people saying, oh, she should have never gotten out of prison. I mean, personally, I don't think she should have gone to prison. You know, people have <laughs> their, their captor many a times. And there's people who didn't. And people have <laughs> their abuser. And there's people who didn't. And I don't know. Because we'll never know. That Gypsy wouldn't be dead right now. You know, her mom loved that attention. And that poor, pitiful me. And as Gypsy was getting older and maybe wanting to explore her own life, I could very much see a possibility of her mother <laughs> Again, I understand where people are coming from, but as a, you know, with age comes maturity. And as you can see, I have lots of maturity going on here. And I just want to say, you know, give her a break. Give her some time. Let her, let her go through her therapy. Let her, let her heal. Let her mind develop in a normal world in a normal situation with loving people around her. I don't think Gypsy would ever do that again. I don't think she would ever, ever in a million years reoffend. I think she is scared. I think she wants to learn. I wish nothing but the best for her. I hope that some part of her life can be happy because let's face it, she went 23 years with a, with a captor. I mean, that's what her mother was, was a captor, teaching her horrible things, teaching her disgusting, vile things to four days of freedom with Nick and then prison for eight and a half years. So, you know, she's just now experiencing really what any of us would call the real world. And so who are we to jump on this poor girl because she said the wrong thing in one interview? You know, and going back to, oh, she's a manipulator. She, she's a fraud. She, she doesn't consider herself a Well, how many people have told this girl that? Okay, how many people have told her, oh, what you did wasn't, you weren't the real <laughs> you weren't the one who did this. That was Nick. So, of course, she's going to get that dialect in her vernacular. That's only natural. I think, I know Gypsy, and I know she inner reflects, and she feels horrible that she could not have come to a different solution. As far as my son is concerned, um, you know, when he met her, it was not in a dating sense at all. He wrote her to say he had empathy for her. My my children are like me. We have big hearts. And Ken is no exception. He has a big heart. And he became friends with her. He was never attracted to her in the beginning. It wasn't until he saw her in person, actually, that he was like, oh, my God, I'm attracted to this girl. And uh, he battled with that because he knew people thought he was a weirdo. And uh, so he kept it very hush-hush and very private. And then when... You know, her story was coming out around the time the act was coming out. A lot of people reached out to him. You know, a lot of big names. I'm like, you know, no need to say them. But you all know who she's interviewed with. Don't think for a minute they didn't reach out to her and me. And, uh, you know, he really listened to that. He really did. He took that to heart. And he and I talked and he said, Mom, you know, like, I don't want to do anything to hurt her. She's been hurt so much in her life. You know, what should I do? And, of course, I told him, you have to go with your gut. But... She probably does need to get out and live her life and have some freedom and then see where things go. Now, to all the, you know, are they getting back together? Are they getting back together? First off, Gypsy is a married woman. 
okay? Now, no one can tell the future. I'm not psychic, I, you know. I'd love to meet that Teresa chick, but I think she just talks to the dead. But um, I don't think the dead can tell us the future. But, uh, you know, as of right now, she's presumably a happy married woman, happily married woman, and I want her to stay that way. I want nothing but the best for this poor girl. She's had enough beatdowns and enough heartache for five lifetimes, for real. You know, let the girl have some happiness. Um, in the future, I, you know, Ken, Ken is, you know, he's working, he's got a girlfriend, he's, you know, living his life. I don't know what the future holds. No one does. But for right now, I will just say, Ken wants the best for Gypsy. I want the best for Gypsy. I think that, you know, these people coming on and presuming the worst about her don't know her and are just picking on, nitpicking on each little word. And come on, guys, we can do better than that. You know, we need to be about love and peace. So as you can see, Ken's mom is pretty supportive of Gypsy. And as she mentioned, Ken has a girlfriend. So could Gypsy and Ken just be two friends hanging out going to get tattoos? Sure. Could they be more? Absolutely. However, only time will tell. Now, I have also seen people mention the fact that Gypsy lightened her hair from very dark brown, almost black, to light blonde. And I remember that somewhere along the line, Gypsy said in one of her interviews that Ken actually prefers blondes. So now people are questioning if Gypsy actually lightened her hair because Ken prefers blondes. That's all I have for now. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are down below in the comments. Do you think that Gypsy left Ryan for Ken? And do you think that Gypsy and Ken will end up in a relationship? If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing and I'll catch you guys on the next one.